My Lord, the first uh, application in which we have filed uh, these documents in uh, the file officially called Petition Number E015 of 2024, application dated 21st of October 2024. It is supported by an affidavit that uh, has been uh, sworn by this affidavit has been sworn by the Honorable David Muni Madenge. It is further supported by a supplementary affidavit. That is 21st, a supplementary affidavit of 24th of October 2024 by the Honorable David Madenge. My Lord, in addition to that, we have filed a bundle of authorities, which I believe that uh, they have been furnished to the court. My Lord, uh, 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 looking at my watch, it is... Uh, 3 p.m. I will be. Uh, I am certainly going to require some additional time, but uh, let me start uh, and see how best we can manage the time that has been allocated. My Lord, in the ruling that uh, you delivered yesterday, you made a significant point that this is a matter of extreme public importance that deals with the most weighty issue that can be conducted both with regard to the office that it relates to and to the issue of political succession. My Lord, the issue of political succession countrywide is, a, is an existential issue of the state. Existential issue of the state in the sense that this is an issue that when you read uh, Professor Namwebe, uh, uh, Ben Nabweze, and when you read all these uh, cases from Pakistan, they are the most weighty constitutional issues that can appear before any group of judges. And my Lord, for purposes of this country, we are saying that for the 2010 constitution, the matter before you, and that is why uh, has informed the filing of these applications, is one that is an existential issue for purposes of the 2010 constitutions. Your Lordships, I say Your that... Honor, sorry for interruption. You have been muted. I am unable to follow proceedings. Okay. Now it's okay. My thought process is affected now. Yes, my Lord. Uh, so I, I, I was uh, submitting and saying that uh, it is, a, is an existential issue for two reasons, my Lord. My Lord, uh, most of us who are, say, who are at least practice for 20 years are aware of two provisions of the former constitutions of Kenya. We used to have a section 23 of the, of the Kenyan constitutions in which all executive powers were vested in the president. That position radically changed under the 2010 constitutions. We used to have section 30 of the constitution in which parliament meant the president and the legislature. My Lord, those positions changed. The change of those positions, which is the submissions that we are making, the impeachment proceedings would have the consequences if it goes the way in which it has gone of effectively bringing back to life sections 23 and sections 30 of the former constitutions. Now, the second issue that I need to emphasize on the existential issues for the constitution is this. My Lord, from the standpoint of the constitutions and to safeguard constitutionalism, there is these issues that is called security of tenure that certain officers enjoy, particularly with regard to the questions of removal. My Lord, the two officers 
that enjoys the greatest tenure are the office of the president and the office of the deputy president. My Lord, why is that the case? Because they are legally protected that to remove a president or a deputy president, you need impeachment. They are also secured by the electoral process that those two people, to get to those offices, they must be voted into those offices by, by the people. My Lord, the significance of this is this. Every other holder of the offices from constitutional office holders to judges and everybody else doesn't enjoy political tenure. It is only legal protection for those particular offices. So that, my Lord, the point is this, that the true weight of this matter is this. If it were to turn out that uh, an office that enjoys the greatest protections, like the office of the deputy president, can be called, the removal can happen as we are alleging it happened in this case. My Lord, the whole scheme of constitutional tenure and protection that is necessary to protect our democracy would effectively be null and void. This would mean if you have numbers, you do not like the speaker of the day, you can get him out. Numbers in a democracy, and that is where you, read, you write the constitutions, Numbers must be controlled by law. If we reach a position where numbers cease to be controlled by the law, my Lord, that would effectively have negated all the constitutional gains that this country has made. My Lord, having made that point of the, ne the nature of the issues that you are dealing with, let me come to the issues before you. My Lord, the petitioners, or in those cases, uh, in those affidavits, in the applications, are saying a very simple issue. They are saying that as a result of events that occurred in Kirinyaga, that are partly the subject of the de yesterday's decision that was made, and as a result of other matters that is the subject of the supplementary affidavit, the petitioners feel, and the petitioners are of the strong opinion, that a case of this magnitude is not the kind of case that uh, should be decided by a bench in which they do not enjoy full confidence in. My Lord, uh, the basis of that, since this is high writing, would be four. My Lord, on the first issue is that uh, the petitioners and in their, in their applications that they did and is a subject uh, of, of a ruling, they pointed out certain issues that brought into question the issues of the transparency, the proper accountability for purposes of the handling of that particular file. The affidavit is there. And they, according to the petitioner, that brought into them some doubt, the manner in which the handling was done as to the impartiality of this particular bench. The petitioners goes on to issues number two. They say that whereas they put in an affidavit setting out the reasons why there was a problem in the manner in which those issues were done, the respondents did not respond to challenge those particular set of facts. But my lords, uh, the petitioners are saying that now that the respondents did not challenge their set of facts, the contrary issue that happened is this that uh, in the ruling that was read yesterday, we got a copy 30 minutes ago, there was a section that was called other issues. In the sections that was called other issues, the petitioners are saying that this court answered factual and evidential issues that relates to that application. And the consequences of that is that although they had been aggrieved to them, that would amount to this court entering the arena of uh, conflict between the parties, the petitioners and the respondents. And my Lord, the old principle applies that uh, a judge, one cannot be a judge of his own cause, and in any matter that they are dealing with, it should be a matter that they are absolutely neutral as far as the facts and the evidence are concerned. 
My Lord, in our African societies, I've talked to my parents, I talked to Mr. Uganda, he said his community had the same set of issues. According to my community that I came from, in any those cases that used to be done traditionally, the first thing that would arise was this, and Article 159 says we respect our customs. It was to ask those who will be able to determine this case, are all the parties satisfied with uh, this group of wazes that will be deciding the case? If either of the parties said, I don't know about yours, I said mine and Ogada. Mine is Kikuyu. I don't know. Ogada will talk for himself. <laughs> my, my Lord, let me have some peace. <laughs> I think he wants to destroy my train of thoughts. My Lord, so, so, so that the point I was saying, I can be happy. Ogada can defend himself of what he told me. But, I, but my Lord, I'm saying, at least for my community, that that issue would arise. Does any of you have a problem with, with any of the, these wazes who will decide the issue? My Lord, if the issue arose... That a party said, me, I don't want that Mze to be there, or that other one. Invariably, and this is communal justice, that person would pull out and get a Mze, another Mze, that everybody feels comfortable with. So that, my Lord, and I've appeared with you, I respect all of you absolutely. The petitioners are saying, the circumstances of this matter is that we are unable to enjoy that confidence. My Lord, when the petitioners were speaking about what they said they feel, like, uh, is the three-judge bench one in which uh, they, have, uh, they expect fair and square justice? That was the terminology in the case of Gedongori that we have attached in our, so on our submissions. That from the word go, a party appearing before the judges should be able to feel that we have a reasonable chances of success before, be, between those judges, but more importantly, that none of the judges is connected to the cause, one, to the cause, or to the individual in which you are in dispute with. My Lord, why is that important? That, my Lord, is important because since Saturday of this week, in fact up to yesterday, but the petitioner says they have been treated to a situation, and a lot of those information people have sent it to my phones because they have seen me on television, we, where we have such a scenario that repeatedly they keep saying we are going to have a, 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 what is it called? We are going to have a swearing in as soon as these three judges give to those particular orders. My Lord, that cannot create confidence because assuming it is not this case, Every party, and we have very many cases here, if somebody you are drinking him in a bar says, no, you are going to lose that case before the persons we are appearing before. That, my Lord, is a party. Parties are not lawyers, are not supposed to be sophisticated. That party will be left suddenly with a huge, huge problem as to whether actual justice is possible. And it might actually be, my Lord, that when, whenever EOS is dealt, the petitioners will win this case. As we expect, we shall win if the petition is had. My Lord, if that is the case, and that may actually be the case before you, but my Lord, the scenario that is bad and that is prevented by the law is a scenario where the parties lose. Because they will say, well, you are Gambit Nassil told us, Oscar Sudi told us, Kamket told us, and all these individuals who are saying it was called drama. We are here for entertainment. My Lord, if judges are supposed to be treated to entertainment, and those judges are supposed to stop that entertainment, my Lord, there is a problem on the face of it. There is a notice of appeal that we have filed, and it is part of the supplementary affidavit. In this notice of appeal, your Lordship, we have pointed the issue, and we have said... One of the other issues of concern is that the judgment of this court that dealt with these other issues, that that judgment, the contents of that, amounted to preempting and answering the application that I'm arguing before the court. Because those issues we are submitting did not come from the respondents, but these applications having been filed, we are arguing these applications after 
in a previous ruling of yesterday, we have effectively been responded by the court itself. The petitioner says that they are absolutely uncomfortable with that, and they cannot be able to say that if we have reached a situation whereby judges are answering our case in advance, it is absolutely bad and beyond repair. My Lord, the, sec the second last issue that I want to say is this. The issues, my Lord, is, and we expressed that concern yesterday, we were not sure whether we would even file a notice of appeal as counsel. But you are told you cannot file to file this one because it is uh, the issue, as far as we are concerned, we were not treated fairly. We were accused, we are playing to the gallery, as a result of the accusations and uh, indictment that we are playing to the gallery, what effectively ended up being glossed over is the question of uh, is the question of our own submissions. And my Lord, the basis and therefore the accusation, and we are saying we were not treated in a temperate and judicious manner. The petitioners and their advocates. Then, my Lord, we go to the deciding for purposes of yesterday, the core issue. My Lord, the core issue in our petitions, a number of them when it comes, would be the question, does the IEBC have the power to have authorized the president to say that, Kidik, I'm saying it is in our petition, I'm saying one of the issues that will be coming in for determination would to just help me learn a trend. We are not arguing the substantive application. It's a recusal. Let him stick to the issues. Let him hear the issue and the answers. My Lord, but, but just do the right thing. My Lord, the point I was making is this. Eh? One of the questions, I want to tie it with 165. And the question is this. The question that would be arising is whether the IEBC without commissioners could have declared Honorable Kindiki to be suitable for this nomination in the letter they did to the president. My Lord, that particular issue is significant because the petitioners are saying that this court, having effectively read Article 165.4 in a manner that amounts to amendment of Article 165.4, they perceive the real danger that when a more important question arises, the same logic would be applied against them. And they are saying, this being a very serious legal issue, the bench cannot be said that for purposes of the issues actually in contention, that uh, people can be oblivious of such an issue. I need like two or three minutes. Maloda, having said that, therefore, it is our submissions. And, have, uh, and as our uh, Honorable Mita has said, Nobody extracts any joy to raise this kind of an application because judges are legal colleagues. But my Lord, the point that uh, we also want to add for purposes of this application, uh, this, is, this is contained, I believe, in the affidavit of my clients, is of course to point out to the issue. But the Honorable the Deputy President, regarding Gashagua, by a letter dated 23rd of October 2024, did file... Uh, a complaint against uh, all your lordships and this complaint was acknowledged by the Judicial Service Commission that it has been received. Then there is an issue that required disclosure. According to the petitioners, I wasn't even aware of this, I saw it today, according to the petitioners is that uh, there is a very close relationship between one of your lordships, the Honorable Judge Murima, and the Speaker of the National Assembly, who is uh, the Speaker of the Senate, who is uh, a member of here. That close relationship, according to the petitioners, is one that ought to have been disclosed so that parties could be able to make up their mind that uh, are you comfortable, and we do that every day, I've actually not proceeded in a number of matters for some of the judges who are my classmates saying, Kibe was this, we were close, we were friends. Uh, are you comfortable? That question ought to have been raised. That issue was not raised, and as a result of that issue not having been raised, 
and now having come to public notice, the petitioners are of the view that it would not be proper to be able to proceed in this matter. My Lord, in conclusion, what I would uh, like to add... Clute, I, I want you to be added another minute. Could he please, for, to assist us to respond, uh, set out the nature of that relationship and where it is expounded in the affidavit? Well, my Lord, I thought that can actually come during the response, as I say. The duty, the burden of establishing facts is on the person pleading the facts. So we want to know that relationship so that we can respond to it. Yes, my Lord, uh, I, 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 I have no problem whatsoever. There is a written affidavit. My Lord, uh, in... Uh, Paragraph uh, 6 of the supplementary affidavit, it reads as follows. Whereas I was not aware about the relationship between the Honorable Justice Mrima, who is among the three judges handling this matter, and the fourth respondent, that is Kingi, it has been brought to my attention that the Honorable Judge and the fourth respondent, Speaker of the Senate, are very close friends as demonstrated as here under. For one, the respondent attended the wedding ceremony of the judge and they took a photograph with him. Number two, in a post on social media, may, may please, he Lordship. indicated... May, may I please, Your Lordship? May I, say I thought something? I should finish. May I say something? May I say something? Yes. The position that my land friend, Mr. Kipe, had taken in my humble submission, was most appropriate. We are not here to destroy professions. Disclosing some of the details may not be the right thing at all. I think one should make a reference in a tactical manner, which your lordships will be able to appreciate of what is going on. Uh, I would respectfully say to you, that this is an area where we have also to protect the judiciary, uh, the judges and the magistrates, the judicial officers. I'm not very sure that we should have an in-depth account of what really one is complaining of. Let me explain that, my Lord. There is a new affidavit that has just come online that contains some of these allegations. It wasn't there before, and that's why we sought. No, you may proceed. I, I think I agree with Dr. Kaminwa that unless, because as I said, I am not the source of any of this information or something that came to my knowledge, that I was sticking to what my learned colleague is talking about, unless there is insistence by my learned colleagues. My Lord, I do not see the value of that insistence. I'll follow Dr. Kaminwa's position. It is stated in the affidavit. I will not say anything more on that. The respondents can say we can have a rejoinder when we, the issue arises. My Lord, and uh, the problem with these issues of uh, somebody not continuing what they are saying is that you keep forgetting the last point. The last point, my Lord, I think that um, I was making is this. That at the heart of an application for recusal, the authority speaks themselves, the one we have cited, I may not have time to go through them, is these issues that, I, that are considered very important. Number one would be whether on the basis of the accusation and apprehensions set out, would one party feel that their right to fair trial before an independent, impartial, and fair tribunal be upheld. The petitioners on that score are saying their are rights under Article 50 to fair hearing, which is absolute, would not be possible in the circumstances of this case. Number two, there is a question of the right to protection of law under our Constitution. That right to protection of law requires that for it to be protected, there must not be any doubt that 
that protections would be availed if it is deserved in accordance with the law. The petitioners again say they have reasons to believe as a result of all matters taken into account that their rights under Article 27 would stand violated. And my Lord, the final issue, which is most important, My Lord, the final issue, it could not really have been final, but I have to finish. My Lord, the, the final issue that uh, is critically important for this issue is the old uh, notion, the old principle that justice must not only be done, but must actually be seen to be done. In the circumstances of this case, it is our submission that apart from the real issues that uh, the petitioners had, the weather perceptions, weather substantial issues, the petitioners are saying that your lordships, they are unable to say that at the start of these proceedings, we were confident that these judges are capable of upholding our constitutional rights and to uphold justice equally between us. My Lord, we are most observed. Thank you for letting me conclude substantially on what we set out to do. We are most obliged. Thank you. My Lord, before the next uh, speaker goes on, I think there is something we agree